In one of my favorite movies, The Princess Bride, Vicini repeatedly uses the word inconceivable whenever something happens that he didn't expect. Well, finally, Inigo Montoya confronts him and says, you keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. Well, are there some words that God uses that do not mean what we think they mean? In Philippians chapter 1, the end of verse 18, Paul says, Yes, and I will rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance. Oh, this is the imprisonment that he's facing right now. He says, it's going to turn out for my deliverance. That means he's going to be set free, right? Well, let's see as he continues writing. As it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. Paul still thinks he might be put to death. I mean, it's not surprising that he thinks that could happen, but he calls that deliverance. <laughs> That's not what that word means, or is it? You know, how can Paul view being put to death as deliverance? Because of what he says there in verse 20. It is my eager expectation and hope, not that I'll get out, not that I'll be set free, that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honored in my body. Paul says, it doesn't matter whether I'm set free or put to death, as long as how I face that, as long as what I do brings glory to Christ, brings honor to Him. That's what's important. This is in total example of what we saw last time, having a spiritual, eternal perspective on things. And so that's how that word deliverance can mean something different than we thought it meant. Well, what about some other words? You know, one that comes to my mind is the word blessing. I truly believe, matter of fact, I have this relationship circle that says God created us to have a relationship with us, and his role in that relationship is to provide for and bless us. All right, what do those words mean? If you ask me what I'd like them to mean, well, God's going to provide for all my physical needs and a few or more of my physical wants. God's going to bless me financially and with health and relationships, and life's going to go pretty smoothly. That's how I define a blessing, right? But God, when he says he's going to provide for us, may well mean he'll provide a situation where it's difficult, a trial, a struggle that provides me an opportunity to grow. And when I grow, that's a blessing. And so the whole thing is a blessing, a chance to grow, become closer to God. That is a blessing. But boy, it's not what I think of at first when I think of being blessed by God, is it? Matter of fact, look back on your life. Is there a time when God's provision and blessing didn't look like what you expected? Uh, I'm guessing the answer is yes, almost certainly. Well, how did you respond to that? You know, did you get all upset? Like, God, this isn't what you said would happen. You know, I became a Christian and this is what happened? Well, is that because I misunderstood, misdefined, wrongly defined what God has said he's going to do in providing for and blessing me? You know, how does having, stop and think about this, how does having a, a temporary physical focus, how does that set me up just in general for being disappointed with God? Even being mad at God. If I think, if everything, my priorities are temporary physical things, then whenever God doesn't do something that matches my expectation, my definition of blessing, I'm going to be disappointed and maybe even upset. So what am I facing now? Is there something you're facing right now where you're starting to realize, it's starting to click, like, wow, what I've been expecting and maybe hasn't been happening, it's not based on what God has said. It's based on my misunderstanding of things God has said. And what can I do to clarify that? What can I do to, whether it's, you know, do some Bible reading, talk to someone, you know, work it out. Someone maybe knows more. You can work it out together. Look back on situations. All of that growth triangle. Ask God, certainly, to show me, God, what do you want to do in my life? And Lord, help me see it through that spiritual, eternal perspective, which, you know, a big part of that is just being surrendered. God, whatever you want, as long as it brings glory to you, that's what I want.